Hey, <laughs> welcome back to the night walk vlog. Yes, it is me. I might be a bit hairier and fatter. <laughs> it's been quite a week, if you didn't guess. So, it's been about a week since uh, the last time I saw Friender, alive that is, put this out, it's been about a week now, oh shit, we got light. <laughs> we got lights here, we got lights, it's been about a week now since I saw Friender, it's uh, Thursday morning, 2 a.m., so the last time I saw a friender was like last week, Wednesday night, around like 1030 p.m. or something like that. So it's been it's been about a week now since the last time I saw him alive. You know, he died, uh, we believe, Saturday, uh, last Saturday, and we buried him. Let's go to his grave. Let's go visit Friendo. Right here. See if I can get a shot of that. That's probably might be too dark. Oh, okay. Just follow the light. Follow the light. It's dark as fuck, so <laughs> bear with me. But this light, this is his grave. This is where he's at. I'm gonna fix it up a little bit. It's a little, you know. <laughs> but my mom put some uh, grass, some grass stuff up there, so like it'll grass will start growing again. But uh, yeah, this is this is where friend is resting. So it's been about a week now. It's been a week of just grieving and mourning. I haven't really done much except eat copious amounts of junk food, masturbate way more <laughs> than I care to explain. I haven't shaved. I'm just I'm just looking like a <laughs> I'm just looking like a mess, but I'm I, I'm I'm now I'm feeling I'm feeling myself beginning to recover a little bit now, I believe. Hold on, let me see this real quick. Oh, there we go, there we go. The brightness is down. Like what the fuck? <laughs> but I feel myself starting to recover a little bit now. And I can kind of talk about the whole experience because I never experienced something like this before. This is, without a doubt, the worst period of my life. <laughs> um, but I, I just I wanted to talk about a couple things about it. And this is the Friender Night Walk episode. <laughs> um, and I'm in the backyard now, so the big mystery that I was trying to figure out was like, how did Friender even get out, right? Cause I thought it was, I thought that it was pretty simple, right? When I got home that day, I must have left the gate open, and that's how he got out. But the thing about it, we've been, I've been having an issue with that gate for a while. It's been a couple times where, cause I usually when I leave home, I go through my back door here. This is my room. <laughs> I go out. Frienders here. I go through the gate right there. I close the gate. I go where I'm going to go and I come back, you know. But it's been like two or three times where I would come home and Friender would be in the front yard. And I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? And so I'm like, wait, I left the gate open. And I was like, okay. But then it, it never made sense. Like, wait, how the fuck did I even leave the gate open? Like, that shit, like, it happened like two or three times. And every time that was like, I know, I, I could swear I did not leave that fucking gate open, bro. But I was like, you know, I'm kind of forgetful, maybe, you know. But this time, I was looking more into it. Because just, try, just trying to put all the pieces together, you know, as far as, like, how he got out. And it was a couple things that were strange to me. And it made me re it made me kind of realize, like, what what more than likely been going on with that fence. But I remember... One, a couple days, maybe maybe it was like a week or so before Friender had got out and got killed, 
there were these these huskies that were coming around the neighborhood to and kind of coming around Friender, like like the fence area to see Friender. And I was like, oh, cool dogs. <laughs> I got it on camera too. Um, but yeah, these huskies been coming around. I was like, I ain't think much of it. I thought there were just some, some stray huskies on adventures. And I seen them before too, but except the last time I saw them was two of them. And this time it was three. And they came, they circled me and me and, uh, went around to smell friender at the gate and, and they left. They just disappeared like that. And so when friender disappeared, something was weird that I noticed. And it was that his food bowls were completely empty. And, <laughs> and see one thing about friender friender wasn't really a picky eater, but he was kind of selective. Like, it, like, like, man, the scariest thing is when you give your dog something out the house and he don't want to eat it ever. <laughs> but friender was actually, I can say he was a light eater, but it was just, he was so well fed that sometimes we would feed him like his primary meal of that day. And he wouldn't eat the whole thing. Like he would leave like half or a quarter of it in there. Like it was getting to the point where it was actually unusual for a friend of the, to clean out his bowl because my mom would feed him. I would feed him when he was in the house with me, like give him scraps and shit. So he, he just, he always pr pretty much the most part had, uh, I guess you could say a, a, a relatively full belly. So a lot of times I, I, I was getting used to seeing him leave food in his bowl. So when he went missing, I'm looking in the backyard after I start, like after I searched the neighborhood. And what I thought was weird was that his food bowls were empty. I was like, that's kind of weird. Like, like, cause even with water, like he don't just slurp, he don't just slop everything up. <laughs> That's, that's just how friendly was. So I thought that was weird. And so I started thinking, like, maybe some dogs came by and he followed behind them. Because even the fact that he left this whole block was weird because Friender got out before. And but before when he got out, he never he never left like this immediate area. He never left like he would stray a little bit, maybe into the neighbor's yard, a smidge. He might even go across the street, but he never left like this general area, right? Like he would always stay by the house. This time he was completely gone, like just not, I mean, completely off the block, right? And that was weird because even when he got out before, he never left this area. And so I was thinking like maybe those, those dogs or different dogs came and got in here, ate what was left in his bowl, drunk the rest of the water and shit. And then he left with him. And especially so if it was that group of Huskies, like if one of those was a female, he definitely would have followed behind them because, you know, Brenda wasn't, he wasn't neutered or nothing. So he was ready to fuck. <laughs> like I'm, I'm guessing like, because based on the research I was doing, a lot of times male dogs or female dogs, they'll stray further away when they're in heat. And so I'm thinking, Again, I'm just, I can only speculate based on the evidence and shit, but my hypothesis is that those dogs, that group of Huskies or some other dog came by and he left with them and then that's how he strayed so far away. But then you wonder, okay, well, wait, how did they get into the fence? Like either I left, now either I left it open or they opened it, right? And so, wait, how the fuck can a dog open it, right? <laughs> and so, this is when this is where shit gets interesting. So let's look at the fence here. Okay, let me see if I can get this shit right. So this is uh, let's get a, this is the latch, right? And so, what I was thinking, let me see. What I was thinking, let me show you. This latch here is rusty so if you haphazardly put the, put it up there it won't go all the way down and so those first couple times Sprinter got out I thought okay that must have been what happened right I let, like I didn't put the latch all the way down and then he must have pushed it right but then I'm like okay wait a minute I pushed the fence 
and it don't go nowhere. So that don't make sense. But then I push the fence from the outside, right? Now I'm not touching the latch, I'm pushing it from the outside. Oh, hold on, let me do that. So I'm pushing the fence from the outside. Boom. I don't know if you can see that, but the gate is open. The gate is open. <laughs> the gate is open, right? So what I didn't realize was that this fence was way fucked up. It was way more damaged than I thought. So basically, again, it's hard to see because it's real dark. Let me see if I can get a good light on it somewhere. Hold up. See if I can get a light on it, but let me see what's that. Oh, that's me. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to show it off. It's hard to do it with this, this fucking camera and shit. But basically, basically, the gate is fucked up in such a way that if the latch, if the latch is not fully down. Let's say you're a dog and you push the fence from the outside. The gate will open because the other side of the, the, the fence the, um, is leaning. It's nothing holding it. it is. It's so hard trying to get, <laughs> trying to direct this shit with this, this fucked up ass light. Hold on. That's little bitch ass flash. Like I'm trying to get the trying to get a good view here but basically the fence is leaning it's leaning so that when you push it it falls forward and when it falls forward the gate opens and so you might be thinking okay Marco <laughs> okay Marco You've gone full conspiracy theory <laughs> theorists now. Okay. Like that's logical, right? But you're just making excuses. <laughs> and so I thought that too, right? And so Okay. So after the fact, when Friender was dead, I buried him. And maybe it was a day later, right? I buried him. And, you know, the soil on top of his grave is, is like soft and muddy. You know, it's real soft and muddy because that's that soil I got from like deep in the ground and shit. So I left a, I left one of his favorite dog treat bones on top of the grave, you know, because I'm a sentimental bitch. So, so I, I left I left one of his doggy treats on the grave. I'm going to show the grave again. And there's one up there now, but that's not that's not the one I'm talking about. So let me see if I get the light up here. So you see, this is like his favorite little doggy treat here. I would buy it for, for him, the 99 cent at Food Line. So when I came out here to give friend of his, his respects, send him off, I left one of these out here. It was four o'clock in the morning when I did that. I came back seven o'clock or 6.30 in the morning, the bone was gone. And it was paw prints all over his grave. And I don't know if you can see him because, you know, this fucking camera and shit. I'm going to try my best to get it on camera. But it's, and they still here. It's paw prints all over his grave. It's paw prints all over his grave. Now, I ain't, I, ain't, <laughs> I know it, <laughs> this won't be ghost the friend. I'm not in I'm not implying this is some ghost, some dog ghost shit. But what this, and then, okay. So his dog treat was missing and he got doggy. These are, these are, these are paw prints all over his grave, right? I look at the fence and the fence was just like this. The fence was just like this. Right? It was open at the bottom, just like a dog pushed it open from the outside and got in. 
Cause again, the fence is fuck is fucked up in such a way. And, and, and look, even now the latch is all the way up there. It's not even half, but the latch is all the way up there. But as you can see, if a dog came and pushed here, it's just enough room for him to get through and come into his grave, grab the tree, get back out. Now the only the only thing about it is that I know that when I came out. The fence was open. So that's why I think that when I came home, I left the latch in the halfway position like that instead of closing it all the way. So if a dog came and opened the gate, it would have been that easy. All he, would, all he had to do was push and now the gate wide open. And so I'm Jimmy Kudo. <laughs> <laughs> oh man let's start walking <laughs> that was my jimmy kudo investigation man i swear like i had nothing else to do i had to figure out what the fuck happened but so in conclusion <laughs> in conclusion i believe that frander got out because one i didn't put the latch all the way down right I don't think I I think it was just like what I what I would do before where I could have sworn I put I closed the gate but really because that latch is rusty it must have been in the halfway position. But the gate was still like even with it like that Frender couldn't get out from the inside. And so just based on everything that I've seen I think that there have been dogs and it could be that same group of huskies that's been coming through here or a different dog that's been coming over at night and then they pushed the fence open from the outside, came in, ate the rest of Frender's food, and then he followed behind them. And I would just assume that if it might have been a female dog, especially if it was that group of huskies. Cause they're like three damn dollars. I ain't had time to, to, to dick check them. <laughs> but um, that's my <laughs> that's my uh my friender death conspiracy theory. I think I think that some dogs came and opened the gate. <laughs> that's that's don't that sound like a cope the dog? But I I, I hope I, I I wish it was daytime <laughs> because you would see that everything everything I was showing you made sense. But I think that that it's very possible that some dogs came and they pushed the fence open because the the, the fence is, is just, is it's not all the way broke, but it's just that the other side of it is leaning so that you can push it and then it'll open just like that. But I think that it's very possible that dogs came and they pushed the, the gate open and then Frender followed behind them. And then I don't know if he got lost <laughs> I can't say if he got lost or if he was just like, man, I'm going to be out the whole week. <laughs> I don't know. But he, when we found him, when we, I mean, we found him. I ain't going to say it was far, but it's far. You know, it's not far, but it's far for a dog. Like, like you see the street? Like, he was way, way down there, bro. Like, it's way down there. And then to the left where the cemetery is at. That's what, that's where we found him. Like, for a dog, like, it, like Frender was out there. <laughs> he was out there. And, um, you know, I swear, man, these type of situations are just, it, it's, it's weird, man, because... I can't help but think, like, what if I did certain things differently, you know? I can't help but think, what if I checked over there, right? It's crazy because the spot where we where we found him at, by the cemetery, I put a flyer up on the uh, street the, the, uh, the street post right before you hit the cemetery. Like, you cross the street. You at the cemetery. I put a flyer up there. The first day he went missing, I put a flyer up right before you hit that spot. I just didn't go down there. And so you, and you just start thinking, like, what if I went down there? 
You know, like, uh, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, but that, it, it's just, that's how I was thinking. Like, what if I just went down there, man? And But I swear, man, I, 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 I tried my best. I tried. I tried my best to find that damn dog, man. My mama said, she said, <laughs> she said, I loved Friender, but I, it won't no way I would have done as much as you did as far as walking around in the hood, <laughs> different neighborhoods, talking to people I don't know and shit, going to the stores and putting up flyers and shit. Like... By the time I found out that Friender was dead, I was way up, I was way uptown by Walmart in the mall and shit, putting up flyers. And I talked to a police officer. I gave him a flyer. He said he was gonna hang one up in the in the station and shit. It's still some flyers around here right now. I got I got to take down and shit. Some of the store owners they put flyers up in their store. <laughs> I gave one to the Domino's. I mean, I, I dude, I. I tried my best. I was walking around every and and every morning. I had my mom drive me around uh, like all over the city and shit. And we just we just could never find. By the time by the time we found him, it was too late. By the time we found him, it was too late. I tr- man, I tr- I, tr- <laughs> I tried my. I, I just wanted everybody. I I tried my best, man. I tried my damn best to find that dog. But but I, I hate I hate to say it, but it's like within like that first twenty minutes looking for him, I I felt like I wasn't gonna find him. I felt like that was it. I hate to say it, but I my gut feeling was like I ain't never gonna see that dog again. But I knew it was my responsibility to. to I, I couldn't get, like I wasn't gonna give up on him. So I said fuck it. Like I gotta I gotta at least try. So it was pretty much like three days of just looking, you know. Sleeping at night and then the rest of the day just putting up fly, just scheming, trying to figure out like, how I can find this dog and shit. Walking around town, but and I know this this is like another hindsight thing, but I wish I had my bike, man. <laughs> I wish I had my bike when he went missing because I could have covered so much so much more ground. I was on foot, and I was either on foot or, or I was on car with my mom and I couldn't have her drive me around all day, you know? So I had to do a lot of it on my own. I had my, my bike. I could have did so much more, but the, the fucked up thing is, was my bike had a flat, got a flat the same night he went missing. <laughs> that shit was crazy. If I would have had my bike, I could have covered so much more ground, bro. I'm, I'm running around town and shit. <laughs> shit was crazy, man. But it is what it is, but it's it, like I said, it, it's a it's been a, a new experience for me. Like without a doubt, man, this is the worst thing I ever been through. <laughs> this shit has been traumatizing. I have never experienced so much grief in my life. It's crazy. I'm out here two in the morning, don't give a fuck. <laughs> Just fuck it. But um. It's a it's a strange kind of pain though. It's a strange kind of pain. Like it's not a physical pain and to some degree it's mental. But more than anything it's like it's a spiritual pain. Because I was with friend of, like we were together like like this for like three years, bro. Like over three years, and we just we develop such a strong bond in that short period of time, and then you wake up one day and it's gone. You wake up one day, it's gone, and, and you you're never gonna you're never going to get that. You're never going to experience that energy again, you know, because Friender had his own energy. He had his own spirit, and that spirit illuminated our household. It illuminated my life. It illuminated the lives of my family and all that. And it's go- you wake up, and it's gone, and it's, it's so devastating. And it's like, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's, it's such a spiritual pain because I feel like, in a way, 
our spirits were like inter <laughs> are like intertwined and shit for real. I feel like we were just just spirit spiritually merged, right? And now he's gone. And it's like the foundation of my spirit is just so debil just it's debilitated now. It's 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 just it's so debilitated because I was so used to I was so used to having that energy around me. I was so used to to having his spirit in my life and it's now it's just gone and it's like it's it's almost like you're in a car and the car just fall to pieces <laughs> while you're driving it and then you got you in the middle of the road trying to put it back together like that's how it feels it's just like like yo my whole flow is just fucked up and i'm just now starting to kind of like piece myself back together and getting to the point where i'm ready to move forward and get back to living life but it, it's been it's been a tough week man it's been it's been a very <laughs> it's been a very tough week for you, boy. I mean, I I just been I've I've been coping the way only I only I know how eat sleep jack off. <laughs> Man, I've been jacking off so much, <laughs> just trying to you know just uh, just abusing all forms of escapism that I, that I have at my my disposal. But I'm I'm so, I'm starting to get to the point where you know I, I I'm ready to kind of get back up and just, you know just take shit one day at a time and get just get back into the flow of 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 just li living my living living my life again and enjoying it. But I still feel I still feel this emptiness, you know, like I, I, I'm still not back, you know, like to what to, to what I, I was before friend or died you know i still like everything that i have that gives me joy it reminds me of him <laughs> you know i like i'm I'm in my room watching horror movies i'm like i used to watch horror movies with friender <laughs> he would be right there on the bed and, and and i swear sometimes i'll be in my room and it's like i feel like for for a split second i forget that he dead and it's like Oh, friend are right outside. But then it's like instantly it's like, oh wait, he not. Like it's crazy. Like I still that but that's just how close we were, man. It's just if I forget even for a second that he died, I feel like he right outside. I feel like I feel like he right or, and then and each time it, it, it hits me like, oh wait, nah, he not. It's crazy. But that's just how close we were, man. But you know. The thing about this shit, man, is is it's it's just it's tragic. I never experienced nothing like this before. You know, everything that I ever been through, I was able to see the silver lining. I was able to see the 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 positive side of it. I was able to see I was able to cope and reframe, and, you know. I can't. Like this there's nothing there's there there's it's nothing but tragedy. It's an absolute tragedy. You know, the world is is worst off <laughs> without Friender. You know, especially my world. It's just, and that's just what it is. Like I can't cope. It's just it's a tragedy. I, I never, I never experienced such such an absolute loss in my life. You know, never, never. Most of the things I've been through, I could take a lesson out of it or something. Or, but I know, I, and I think really what it comes down to, I never lost something that was irreplaceable. You know. As far as like a person, someone that I love, someone that I, that I never I never had that. Like I know people that died, but no one that I was really close to, you know. And this is my first time experiencing that, and it's woo, <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like I, like I, like I keep thinking about about Gurren Lagann and and Simone when Kamina died, and just how he must have felt then. Like it's like I, I, <laughs> shit, I cried when Kamina died, my damn. <laughs> But that's that's kind of how I feel. Like I'm in that dark room, just just coping and and just uh, you know just fucked up and shit. But you know the good thing about it though, and, and, and well, it's nothing good about it. But I think back to the times I had with Friender, and um, I'm glad that I can honestly say. Even though we were only together for a short time, I have no regrets as far as like how I raised him, the effort and time I put into raising him. 
I never once took Friendly for granted. And I have like just just because look, that that three year that three plus years was all I had with him. But I feel good that I can honestly say that I made the most of it. Like every single day I made the most of of a friender. You know, I made the most of the time that I had with him. And I can at least feel good about that, you know, that I I, I always cherished and appreciated and understood his value and every day um, acted in a way that was according with that. And and that, that at least that I have that much that I can take from it was that I never took him for granted. And I have no regrets as far as like our relationship and the time we spent together. Um, but, you know, rest in peace, friendo. Best friend in the whole wide world. I'll see you guys later. Chad Marco, out.